Good day to you sir or ma'am. I hope that this video has found you well. In this video we will attempt to explain how this young boy will make you feel things that you have never felt, as well as why Kodoro, a four-year-old boy, lives alone in his very own apartment. When I first saw this trailer on Netflix, I was instantly intrigued, and I thought for sure my sister would like this show as well. To which she promptly replied, It doesn't look very good. So I said, You don't care? That this little boy is living alone? He's a child for God's sake! I don't like his eyes. You're a monster. So if you thought like my sister, maybe I can convince you that this show is definitely worth your time. And if you haven't heard of this show until now, then you're in for a treat. It's an anime that shows that everyone has their own problems, and we often put on a mask to hide those problems the best we can. Nobody likes to be seen as weak, and that is why most people don't like to openly state the things that make them feel vulnerable. But Kodoro has this ability to always be able to see through your mask. He is only a four-year-old boy, but he has the emotional intelligence of Mr. Miyagi. He can always tell when someone is in pain, and he always knows how to soothe that pain. Kotoro Lives Alone is an anime that perfectly builds upon itself. Every little thing that happens and every word that someone speaks holds so much weight. It is a slice-of-life anime that feels very dense. It is always just these characters living out their lives, but there is so much packaged into every line delivered. This is an anime where you have to pay attention because everything has meaning. Everything has been expertly selected, every scene has been carefully crafted. There is a reason for every reaction, every decision, every tissue box. It knows how to hit you with a line that is seemingly simple, something that most people would disregard, but through the eyes of Kodoro, we are able to understand. Let me tell you why Kodoro lives alone. Kotaro is a small four-year-old child that has a rather peculiar way of speaking. When Kotaro is asked why he talks in that way, he says, "'Tis the language of the feudal lords." It's pretty adorable, and Jeremy Lee really nailed Kotaro's voice, and I decided to watch the show in English because of that performance. The show starts with Kotaro shopping for tissues. He is planning on giving them to the residents of the apartment he's about to move into as a kind gesture. It moves over to Karino, who is a mangaka and also a bit of a slob. Kotaro shows up at his doorstep to greet him and give him the box of tissues. Karino asks who else is going to be living with him, and this is where we find out that Kotaro will be living alone in the apartment next to Karino. Kotaro knocks on Karino's door again to tell him about how his apartment is without a bathtub. Karino says that most units do not have a bath, so most attendants travel down to the local bathhouse to clean themselves. After hearing this, he must away, to the bathhouse, to receive the cleanliness he seeks. Karino goes back inside to watch TV and sees in the news that there have been a lot of child abductions recently, which prompts him to accompany Kotaro to the bathhouse. While in the bath, Kotaro somehow gets shampoo in his eyes even though he has a shampoo hat on, and Karino helps him out. He even helps Kotaro shampoo his hair, and Kotaro is taken aback by this display of kindness. He tries to tell him that he doesn't need help washing his own hair, but later admits that he was just thrown off because it's been a while since someone else washed his hair for him. This is the first line that let me know that I was in for an emotional roller coaster. I quickly realized that this is an anime that can make you angry, laugh, and cry all in the same episode. As I watched more of this show, it became apparent that this could also happen every single episode. When Karino heard Kotaro's statement, it clicked in his head that this boy is only four years old. So why has it been so long since someone washed his hair? And why did he sound so lonely while saying that? They begin their walk home and he asks Kotaro where his parents are. I don't have them anymore. Karino says that he doesn't have his parents anymore either, that he lost them in an accident when he was young. You must be lonely. Which causes Karino to ask, are you lonely? Even though they had both revealed that they had lost their parents, Kotaro still goes out of his way to sympathize with Karino and say, you must feel lonely. This is the type of person Kotaro is. It doesn't matter how hard life is for him, he always puts others before himself, which is admirable, but also painful. By the way, we are only 8 minutes and 48 seconds into this anime, and I'm already completely invested in these characters. It is rare for me to get this attached to characters this quickly, and even when I do, I usually only feel that strongly about a handful of characters. A similar situation happened with Ranking of Kings. I very quickly became invested in Bochi's journey, and I was thoroughly enjoying the characters of that world. But let's be real, I only really loved Bochi, Kage, and Hilling. Eventually, I came around to a few others, but that's besides the point. But I absolutely loved every character that was introduced in Kodoro Lives Alone. How was this anime able to rope me in so quickly? How was it able to make me experience such an abundant range of emotions? 
I laughed, I cried, and my heart was warmed episode after episode. This is the best anime at being a slice of life anime, and I feel like it has single-handedly set a new standard for slice of life anime, at least for me. Kotaro Lives Alone is a comedy laced with tragedy. I think that there are two things that tell you the most about a person, what makes them laugh and what makes them cry. Once you know these two things, that's when you really get comfortable with someone and you can truly call them a close friend. Or maybe even a BEST OF FRIEND! And because these two things are so heavily explored in this anime, you feel very intimate with the cast very quickly. It felt natural to instantly get attached to each character introduced because of the way that they presented them and their problems. When you start hanging out with someone, you obviously won't know every little thing about them. They will just act the way they do, and through daily conversations, you will slowly start to pick up on their mannerisms. And that's how it feels watching this show. You just feel like you're getting to know these people. You get to see them as they really are with the help of Kotaro. As I said, people don't like to feel vulnerable because letting people know how you really feel is scary. It is scary letting people in. A good example of this is when Kotaro decided to go to the entrance ceremony alone. He could have easily asked any of the other people who live at the apartment complex to go with him to the ceremony, but instead he decides to not tell anyone and venture there alone because in his head, asking for help would mean that he's weak. He shows up to the ceremony and every single child has an adult with them. He is the only one who showed up alone. You can tell that Kotaro feels very lonely in this situation. I mean, who wouldn't? And he keeps telling himself that it's going to be all right. Everything will be fine. Luckily, the gang finds out about the ceremony and they rush in so that Kotaro doesn't have to be alone. You can see his eyes light up when he looks over to see Karino now sitting next to him completely out of breath. Karino tells him, you know, you don't always have to do things like this all by yourself. Even though Kotaro is very happy that everyone came, he still can't admit it, and instead just says, I don't know what you're talking about. It is a very heartwarming scene, and this is how it really is. It is hard accepting kindness. Have you ever tried taking a compliment before? It's very hard. I don't really know what to do with it. It shouldn't be, but for some reason it's very difficult to just be you. People always subtly hide their true feelings, and they always tend to gather around the safest options. And that's because you don't want to butt heads with everyone else around you. My favorite moments in life are when I am finally able to bring down my walls and make a genuine connection with someone. When you finally feel comfortable enough to tell someone how much of a pain in the ass they're being, or how much you appreciate that you met them. And I think that's what makes this anime so special. Because Kotaro can always see past your mask, and with this we are able to see what these characters really think, how they really feel, why they feel the need to hide these parts of themselves, and most importantly, Kotaro shows us why it's okay. Kotaro is very observant for a child, and that's because he had to be. He had a very rough childhood, and he grew up in an abusive home. It's heartbreaking. He is such a sweet kid, even though he grew up in a home where he didn't always feel safe. And I think this is why he is so emotionally intelligent. Kids that grow up in abusive homes learn to read people because they need to know how their guardians are feeling at any given moment. There is a part in the anime where they find the woman who lives next door to Karino named Mizuki passed out in the entrance to her apartment. Karino sees all of the empty beer cans on the ground and comes to the conclusion that she must be drunk. Mizuki sits upright and greets them both with a cheerful smile. Kotaro takes one look at her face and instantly says that he must away to the convenience store. He comes back with a drink. Mizuki takes the drink and then she laughs and points out the fact that the drink is frozen. Kotaro says, yeah, you should take that and wrap it in a towel to cool your eyes. After a lot of crying, one ought to cool them quickly. Mizuki tries to hide the fact that she was crying, but he tells her that it's okay. Even if she were crying, he wouldn't think any less of her because crying is not weak. Karino asks, how could you tell that she had been crying all night? I have been witness to numerous adults crying in the course of my lifetime. And right after he drops that heavy line, he notices that Karino is very confused, and he pivots into a joke. A popular man has many burdens. He is able to pick up on all of these subtleties and figure out how everyone else is really feeling. And I think that it is because of his eyes. Just look at them, it's creepy. I don't like the way this little runt is looking at me. I actually have a theory about his eyes, so allow me to put on my tinfoil hat here for a second. Besides one other person, Kotaro and Karino are the only people with these snake-like eyes, where the pupil extends from top to bottom. When you first look at their eyes, it might come off as unsettling. So why would someone choose to design an anime character's eyes like this? Well, 
Well, I think that it is because Kotaro and Karino view things differently than others. A similarity that these two characters share are that they both have parents who have died, and it's easy to see that it has heavily affected both of them. When something very traumatic happens to you, it definitely affects your outlook of the world, and I think that's why the author chose to portray them like this. This leads me to believe that these three characters all have parents that have died, and they all know about their parents' deaths. I know that Kotaro grew up in an orphanage, and no one in the orphanage had the same eyes as him except Tosku. But one of the kids talks about how their parents toss them aside like trash. I think most of the kids at the orphanage have parents that are alive and just gave them up for adoption or abandoned them, while others might just not know if their parents are alive or dead. Another way to look at it is that these eyes are given to people who have been through something so traumatic that it changed their worldview. Now, this is all speculation, and it might just be a stylistic choice. But if it ever gets revealed that this was the author's intention, then I freaking called it. Now, this next part will contain spoilers, because I can't make this video without talking about the last episode, because it was definitely my favorite. So if you want to avoid spoilers because you haven't watched the anime yet, then you can skip to the time on screen. Or, you know, you can just be bad and watch this part of the video anyways. Oh my god, do we have a rule breaker over here? Throughout the series, one of Kodoro's main goals is to one day reunite with his mother, but pretty early on we find out that she is already dead. The reason why Kodoro has the money to pay for his own apartment, furnishings, and food is because every month he receives money from a law firm. The money is hand-delivered to him because he is unable to open his own bank account. Every time that money is delivered, Kotaro always asks the person where the money is coming from, and they always lie and tell him that it is from a very generous donor. It is heavily implied that he already knows the truth, that the money actually comes from his mother's life insurance. After getting the employee from the law firm drunk, Kotaro asks her again, can you tell me where that money really comes from? Kobayashi, even while intoxicated, still wants to protect Kotaro from the truth, and she still insists that it is from a very generous benefactor as she falls asleep. He says, I sincerely appreciate your efforts to protect my feelings. No one else in the main cast knows this fact until episode 10, the final episode of season 1. In this episode, they are going off to pay respects to Kotaro's grandparents. So Kotaro and Karino take a train to get to their graves. As they are cleaning the graves, Karino starts asking about his family, and he asks what his mother's name was. Kotaro spells it out for him, and he tells him that it's a beautiful name. But then while cleaning the grave, Karino notices something. Sayori Wamiya. Karino doesn't know what happened to Kotaro's mother, but he now knows that she is already dead. Now, for the remainder of the visit, he stays awkwardly standing there to make sure that Kotaro can't see his mother's name on the grave. Kotaro even asks why he doesn't come stand next to him to properly pay his respects. But Karino refuses to move. Kotaro asks if he thinks that he will be able to see his mother again one day. This is where Karino has to make a decision, and he decides that he is going to lie, even if Kotaro hates him someday for it. He tells him, of course, you will see your mom again one day. Kotaro seems almost disappointed at first, but then he is able to quickly rile himself up and shout, If you tell me that there's a chance, then I will believe it is true, for I know that you would never lie to me. It's sad because Kotaro already knows that he will never see his mother again. In this moment, when he asked Karino if he believed that he would ever see his mom again, I think it meant a little more than that. I think that he was asking if he should hang on to this false hope if he should hold on to the little innocence that he had left. Kotaro was always in such a rush to grow up, but everyone else just wanted him to be a kid because he never really got the chance to. When Karino said, of course you will see your mom again, it felt like he was saying, yeah, it's okay to dream. It's okay to believe in Santa Claus. It's okay to be a kid for just a little longer. I have seen over 600 anime, and according to my anime list, that's 202.41 days of anime which is a little sad to think about. But after all of these years, after seeing so many wonderful stories, there are only five other anime that left such a powerful impression on me. I watched all five of these anime in 2010 or earlier, and I thought that the reason that I felt so strongly about these shows was because I watched them when I was young and impressionable. Because I have definitely been blown away by many shows since then, there are many anime that have left an impact on me, but just never to the same degree. And I thought it was because, oh yeah, I'm not a kid anymore. I don't get as wrapped up in cartoons as I used to, and that's fine. But then Kodoro busted in and said, nope, you can still experience childlike wonder as an adult. I know it's super cheesy, but 
I'm glad that I got to experience that feeling again. That feeling of pure kid energy injected joy, where I started running around saying outlandish things like, no, trust me, bro, this is the best anime of 2022. I don't even need to see any other anime. I just know. I'm glad that I watched this anime. I'm glad that I got to feel like a kid again. I want to be sure we can always be together. That is my new dream. Thank you, Kotaro. So if you watched the video until the very end, then I want to thank you very much. If you couldn't tell, then let me tell you again, I really enjoyed this anime. If you like the video and you enjoy what we do here, then please consider subscribing. 99.1% of you are actually not subscribed, which I've never seen that statistic before. And if you want to support us further, then feel free to become a patron. Which reminds me, I would like to thank our current patrons. Thank you very much, Shrexophone, Bubsy, and Rem. If you're still here watching, then thank you very much again for watching the entire video. And just remember, you don't have to believe in yourself. Believe in me. Believe in the me that believes in you. And I'll see you in the next video.